How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? This video will be a questions and answers with Achilles, one of the co-founders of Blank Media Games, the people who made Town of Salem. Hope you enjoy. So this question is one that most people are curious about, and it is, are there new roles that are going to be added to the game? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Uh, so there definitely are. Um, we have a backlog of roles uh, some like you know we'll get an idea or, or see somebody suggest something and, and kind of write it down and keep it in the notes but there's also some that are actually from when we first started making town of salem 2 um, we have roles that just never made it in because you know we got to like 51 and we were just like you know i, I think we got enough we don't need to keep going um some of them were like kind of their own ecosystem. Like for example, we had ideas for like an inventory system. Um, so you could, you know, you can imagine having like a town like blacksmith or armor smith that could like give people a vest or give people a gun. And then now like any role could, you know, have a vigilante gun that's one time use. And you could create a whole set of roles, you know, around messing with people's inventory systems. Uh, so there's, there's a lot in the backlog. Um, I think what you're gonna, like our plan is that uh, for all of 2024, each time we do a new rank season, we're gonna add one, at least one new role to go with each season. How uh, long would you say the rank seasons would be? Yeah, so we're thinking three months on and then one month off season. Uh, and I know people don't particularly like long off seasons, but the reason is because we're gonna do all of our role balancing, uh, the, you know, entire role reworks, uh, the new role, like all of that is going to come in during off season. So we're going to need enough time to like really test that and make sure everything's good before we start the next rank season. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the plan. It, this first season might be a little weird because, you know, we just kind of started it when it was ready and it wasn't really on like a yearly schedule yet. So it might be a little weird until we like get into the rotation of things, but yeah, so we're planning like three three a year basically so the, the second question i really want to ask and again i feel like most of the people online will be interested in this because i get asked it in the comment section pretty often are there plans on making the game mobile uh yes um i hinted at this in the discord i don't think we like publicly announced it but i think i can pretty much spill the beans now uh yeah we've we've already started on mobile development we uh, actually, ha one of our programmers we brought on a couple months back, his expertise was in mobile and the, the plan was for him to, to uh, kind of spearhead our mobile port. Um, he helped us uh, for the first couple months just kind of, uh, you know, getting used to the code base and, and helping out where we needed him. But now that, you know, we have fully launched, he's he started on mobile progress. So it's already in action. Um, I suspect it's going to be quarter one tw of, of next year. Um, so yeah, that's definitely happening. Oh, wow. I didn't think it'd be so soon. Yeah. I mean, you know, we have, we've learned a lot from Town of Salem 1 Mobile. There's definitely some new things we want to try and experiment with. Like, um, for example, we really want to see if we can make a portrait mode work, especially for, for phones versus tablets, uh, just because it's, um, for most people, it's more natural to type, you know, with your thumbs in, in portrait mode. Um, so we want to see if we can't make something like that work, which obviously Town of Salem 1 uh, mobile never really supported that. For sure, there's going to be a lot of people happy about that one. There was a lot of people upset saying, oh, I can't play Town of Salem anymore because uh, I only used to play on mobile or tablet. Yeah, I see that on a Reddit a lot, that there's like a lot of mobile only players that just don't have a PC or, or don't have a PC that can actually handle running the game. So yeah, hang in there. It's coming. Okay. So next question. Uh, why did you guys decide to make the game go free to play? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. There's uh, there's a lot of deep lore to that. Um, so, you know, we this goes you know all the way back to yeah, obviously Town of Salem one days. Um, so, anybody that kind of like knows the long history of Town of Salem, you know, it started out entirely free to play uh, before we were even on Steam. You know, it was just like a web based like entirely free to play with just some cosmetics and. You know, eventually we got on Steam for five dollars, and but we still always had that big free-to-play avenue, um, and it it served us pretty well for a really long time. We grew a lot with that model, but you know we started running into issues with people 
uh, you know, basically making bot programs. And we spent a lot of time battling that with uh, CAPTCHAs and email verification and trying to do IP bans and everything we could think of. Um, and it really just becomes this like giant time sink. And, and if the people that are botting are dedicated enough, there's it's almost impossible to stop them if you just have like no true barriers to entry. Um, and so we like going through all that, we really wanted to be just like a, a paid price box game. Uh, and also it, it definitely helps align like the developers with the, with the customers when, um, you can just focus on making the best game possible. And then, you know, you charge a price for it and, and people buy it. And then you just, that's it. You just, you focus on making a good game. Um, when you are free to play, you know, you're things have to change a bit because now you're like more analytics driven and you need more ways to, you know, induce purchases out of people. And, and now you're spending dev time on things that are like not really just making the game as good as possible. So our goal was to just be a $10 game. And, you know, we went into early access with that and we had a huge success. Actually, our, our early access day was like 3,700 concurrent users. It actually tied um like the best day we ever had on town of salem one which was the coven release uh that was also about 3700 on steam um so it, it seemed like you know we made the right choice in our early access launch um you know the town of salem one user base you know showed up for us and supported us and everything looked really good and we thought we would just continue with that and then, um, you know, the user count started to drop, which isn't unexpected. You know, usually most games first day is like their biggest day and, and you kind of see a fall off. Um, we like, we're immediately like, all right, we're good. Got to line up some marketing. Like we don't want the user count to just like drop too low. Um, we tried some marketing, various different things, content creators, Reddit ads, things like that. But it just, we couldn't keep the user base from just slowly declining. Um, and eventually it just got to a point where we really, we knew like if we didn't change our business model, that the game would just slowly die, that there was just without free to play, you know, we just weren't, we were just going to see the user base slowly decline month after month and until it got so low that, you know, people couldn't fill lobbies and then, and then it's just dead. So, you know, we, we definitely had to, you know, it, it, it took a, a hit to our pride because, you know, we did say we really didn't want to be free to play. Um, but, you know, when the market says that $10 doesn't work, then, you know, you have to adjust or die. Um, luckily though, you know, we, so when it was like, obviously we need to do a free to play, uh, we looked into what options Steam had to try to, you know, verify users. And, and we found out that Steam actually has a pretty good system with, uh, their player level where basically if you don't have at least like five dollars into your account uh, you're you're considered a limited user and so we found the api calls we could we could tie into that and so now even though we're free to play you know we're we're keeping you know bot accounts uh, out of the game so we were able to solve our biggest concern with going free to play with that and um, you know since we went free to play the user account uh, it's almost doubled and it's remained pretty steady. Uh, so, I, I mean, I think it was the right choice for sure. But, um, you know, I'm sure there's some people that uh, were, were upset because we said we wouldn't. But, you know, the only other option was just watching the game die. And I don't think anybody wanted that to happen. Perfectly ties into my next question, which is, can you explain what new player friendly lobbies are and how they work? Yeah, so that's in the works right now it's um it's probably i would say about 75 percent done um we're hoping to have it out next week uh but you know we pretty much everyone on the team we're constantly checking reddit and discord and and we're keeping a pretty close eye on on the woes of the community and, and what's going on and i've seen several people complaining that you know they're a new user they come in obviously the game you know has a big learning curve to it and, uh, and then, you know, the experienced users either don't know that they're new or, uh, or just don't have the patience to teach somebody new. And then, uh, you know, they get, they get, you know, maybe verbally abused or, or, you know, called a noob or whatever. And, uh, and then it kind of creates this, um, uh, this 
bad feeling for new users coming in or there's this big barrier to entry and uh and then you know probably a lot of new users they maybe try the game once or twice and then just quit which obviously isn't great for growing the game in the community so we realize we need to solve this we've tried to solve this a lot of different ways in the past like we've done like four different tutorial systems in toss one and toss two like trying to figure out how best to teach people how to play the game but it's just there's so much information to convey and so much deep knowledge about role interactions that it's like a monumental task to try to do so you know we even in toss two we we have like a new user system where um you know there's some tool tips to help people understand the ui and the basics but we figured that the really the best way was that we needed to get the brand new users to play with other brand new users but also we want to sprinkle in like some experienced players that are willing to be helpful and willing to be tolerant of people learning the game and so that's the the new player friendly lobby so the way it's going to work as of right now is um there's going to be two versions of classic uh you won't really even see the the difference between the two versions on your ui it's just going to look like classic but if you're a new user, uh, which uh, currently we're saying less than five games played, you're going to get put into one of these new lobby, uh, new user lobbies for classic. And then uh, the experienced players can opt into something we're calling the town elder system. And uh, if you opt into town elder, you're agreeing that, uh, you know, you're not going to abuse the new players. There's going to be harsher punishments. If you want to be a town elder just to troll the new players, you know, there's going to be some swift punishments for that. So you're going to agree and understand the rules to that. And then if you do help, you're gonna get some bonuses, which right now is gonna be extra town points, but we are considering like maybe some unique cosmetics or a karma system or some other things to make it more interesting. But then the, so the town elders and the new players are all gonna play classic together. And uh, we're currently working on a way uh, that's gonna be like a separate whisper system for the town elders so that they can help the new players uh, without having the, uh, you know, the general whisper rules, like so that you can whisper at night, you can whisper while you're dead still and things like that. So it'll be like a secondary whisper system with some different rules to it. Um, and we're hoping that the combination of, you know, new players playing with new players and then the town elders there to help kind of guide them is gonna be the answer we've been looking for to, you know, how to teach people this complex game that we all love. How many town elder players were you thinking into one lobby? Currently, there's not a limit, but, um, you know, obviously we're going to adjust the system as we get feedback. You know, we're kind of doing like a version one of it and seeing, you know, how many people are going to be interested in being town elders? How much does this improve things? You know, is, is five games enough? Does it need to be 10? You know, there's definitely going to be some feedback we, we look for from the community and, and then adjust for like a version two of this. Yeah, I do definitely like the idea, but one of the hardest things about this game is the, is the initial barrier of entry and yeah, it's definitely it can be pretty punishing if you just hop into a lobby where everyone knows pretty much everything and you're just like blind you know so it, uh, i do like that yeah and i think some people um you know they might think that you're just like a jester trolling right pretending to be a new player and not actually a new player so there's not a lot of uh you know, not, not a lot of like concern from the veterans to like, is this person actually new or, or is this just some strategy to pretend to be new, but they're actually really good at the game. Nah, that, that's definitely true. Are you planning to expand further on the ghost shop mechanics? Yes, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Um, not like in the immediate future. It's definitely not um, like our highest priority task right now. But we, when we first made the system and the ghost points, we knew we wanted to eventually do some cosmetics uh, to spend your ghost points on. Um, you know, we're probably what makes the most sense is cosmetics that uh, alter your ghost character. So, you know, maybe some ghost skins and ghost effects and things like that. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely like on the backlog of of like plans to do. Uh, but in terms of priorities, it's it's definitely lower on the list than like focusing on mobile and some of the other big things. Most of the things on the roadmap are completed. Are there plans to add anything else other than mobile integration and new roles? Is there anything else on the agenda? Yeah, uh, so when we, we did the roadmap, we were in early access still, and there were just like a lot of core things we knew people wanted and were missing still. So we felt like doing a roadmap was really important so that people knew kind of what they were buying with early access and what it would look like when early access ended. Um, and now that we've 
wrapped all that up. I, I don't think we're going to be announcing another roadmap um, just because I don't think it'll be quite as interesting to the community, uh, right? Like if we're doing like mobile development, that's like a really big task, but it's just like one, you know, one line on a, on a roadmap, uh, yet it's, you know, a, a big chunk of work. Um, and also, you know, we just have like a lot of backend systems and things that aren't really user facing that are like exciting to people that, you know, we're hoping to get knocked out while we're in this current, uh, rank season, because, you know, when the rank season starts to come closer to an end, now it's back to role balancing, new roles, things like that. Uh, so there, there is more stuff coming for sure. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be like a, you know, an exciting roadmap that we're putting out there for everybody to look forward to. What is your vision on the end result of this game? What do you want it to ultimately look like? Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so when I, like all the years I worked on Town of Salem 1, I kind of had this, uh, this goal of like, if I just balance the roles enough times, if I am just interacting with the community, taking feedback, and like I can eventually get these roles to a place where everything is perfectly balanced and it's like this perfect game. Um, but I've realized over the years that that's really like, one, it's probably impossible uh, because balance can be so subjective and, you know, there's almost no game that's like perfectly balanced when you have 50 roles interacting with each other. And also like, even if you could create perfect balance, it's probably kind of boring actually. So the new strategy now is accept that it's okay for things to not be perfectly balanced, but change everything up with each rank season. So, you know, there'll be a season where, you know, the OP roles get their time in the sun and there's some roles that are not so great, but then, you know, the season ends, the OP ones get a nerf, the, the ones that weren't great get a buff, the ones that just weren't working at all get a rework. And then, you know, as long as they aren't uh, atrociously like overpowered or underpowered, then, you know, that's the new rank season and, and it will shake everything up and give people a reason to like, if they, if they fell off and it was getting a little stale, now there's like a new reason to come back. And I think that's like the long-term plan for us is just like each rank season is like a really big patch that shakes up the meta, changes everything up, gives you a reason to come back and play again, you know, check out the new season, uh, get some of those rank rewards and uh, just kind of like rotating that, you know, every three, four months, uh, instead of kind of having this plan of like a perfect uh, list of roles that then never change again till the end of time. Yeah, it sounds like the, the League of Legends approach. I do see where you're coming from. It is, yeah. uh, it does keep the game fresh, for sure. Yeah, and then for like the, the ultimate end game, um, I think modding comes into play. Um, I think the best way to have a really long lifespan is to let your community uh, make changes and create roles and, and alter the game. And so I think like for the, the ultimate end game would be to like have a really strong uh, modding support and modding community. And then at that point, you know, Town of Salem can be the game, like the social deduction game where people can just like create the roles that they want to see. Uh, and then, you know, you could have a really really long lifespan on the game because there's just always fresh new content coming from the community themselves i do really like that mod support the uh bethesda approach a lot of people will be happy about that one for sure yeah and you know curtis and tuba are already uh they have their mod loader program and they're they're doing a lot with modding already uh but eventually want to you know help them uh really like tie into the back end with their mods so that they have more power to be able to do more things with roles yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will be excited to hear that. And uh, j just one final question. Uh, what are the most popular languages the game is played in other than uh, English? And are there plans to try to expand more into different languages, promote the game, Spanish-speaking countries, for example? Yeah, so we, the reason we did all the language ports, um, you know, we were looking at all of our competitors on Steam, you know, Among Us, uh, Goose Goose Duck, uh, Deceit, uh, Project Winter, Dread Hunger, uh, all of them had localization support. So we really we were like, you know, if all of our competitors are doing this, we really need to get some localization support out there. Um, you know, it's tricky because you need an established user base in that locale to, you know, cause it's, you need 
15 people to play a game and you really need a couple hundred people online to like have lobbies fill in a reasonable amount of time. So it's kind of one of those things where like if people only trickle in one at a time, uh, you never really take off. So we, we do want to have some marketing plans to try to like actually really establish a core community in different languages. Um, and probably the biggest one for that is China. Um, I know like a lot of our English speakers probably won't really care about this, but um, for example, like Dread Hunger um, really took off in China um, and China um, really likes Werewolf. They, they actually had a um, like a reality TV show that got really popular where like celebrities would just like play Werewolf in real life with each other. Um, so they liked the genre um, and we've seen like, uh, I was actually listening to um, the guy that made Dread Hunger. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Dread Hunger or not. It's like a uh, kind of survival horror uh, social induction game. Yeah, I'm aware of it. But uh, okay, yeah. So he was saying that they didn't market in China at all. They just supported Chinese localization, but then they like absolutely blew up in China. Um, so you know, we're we want those options to be available to us, um, and we have discussed like potentially trying to do some like live translations um, using like some Google services so that. Uh, the people in the other locales can just all play together and all the all the text would get live translated but it is it's a pretty big like technical problem to solve so I mean we'll see if we can do it but it was something that's been discussed yeah no that that's pretty much all the questions I had is there anything else that you would like to share or just talk about uh not, not really off the top of my head um I mean if you just had any any weird, uh, you know, background lore questions or anything that you were curious about, you know, feel free. Speaking of lore, are there plans to, to make like an official lore for this game? Yeah, so the characters, um, you know, we kind of have this, you know, like each of the characters in the game has uh, their own name to them. And, you know, part of the reason we have like characters and, and skins versus like how Town of Sam 1 was just all characters is... Uh, we, we want to eventually actually like build lore behind each character. Um, and then also, you know, we really liked the, uh, not, not just having a bunch of duplicates in the town kind of, it creates, um, creates like a better immersion feeling when each character is different instead of like having like 10 yetis or something, you know? Uh, but yeah, and we wanted the, we want to create some lore for like each of these characters. That's why they all have unique names right now and uh, their own kind of unique uh, vibe to them. Uh, so yeah, I would say that that will eventually happen when we get around to it. Uh, I have to ask, how did you guys go about naming the characters? Like where do those names come from? Yeah, a lot of that actually was uh, our community manager. You know, he, as an indie company, we all wear a lot of hats. So he does a lot of design work and we kind of put that on him to come up with cool names. Uh, but a lot of them, um, you know, come from different background lore um you know we definitely took some inspiration from like league of legends for example where they they take like the name almost fits what the character can do you know so like blight for example i think is like very fitting for like a plague bearer skin okay well one final question i want to ask because i know people would want me to ask this and it is do you think mafia will ever return to town of salem <laughs> yeah it's that's one of those like I, I can't tell if people are serious or if it's a meme because like I can't tell either. Really, nothing, nothing from the mafia was really lost. Like right, like everything got like every mechanic got ported over to the coven. It, it just got rethemed as a as a coven role instead. Um, the only things like um, you know like hypnotist I guess was lost but I think nobody really liked, like it wasn't really a mechanic worth salvaging like it was just something people didn't like um and then like framer and forger got combined into one role because they were always com kind of complained about as like not being powerful enough and so it just made sense to like merge them uh yeah I, I see everybody like on red all the time like that they want mafia back but I, I mean yeah we we could design a whole mafia faction but it would just be all the same mechanics pretty much that the coven already have so I don't really get why we would do it but i don't know maybe we should just make a uh, a mafia game and you know <laughs> do it like that 
Yeah, no, it's funny. It's one of those things where it, I think it starts off ironic and then people actually start to seriously say, yeah, no, we miss Mafia. We want it back. But <laughs> yeah, I think the, the most logical argument I've heard is that um, Coven All Any was a little more chaotic with having a, uh, you know, entire opposing faction. Uh, you know, like Coven versus Mafia in an all-any game. Uh, but, I mean, hopefully the Neutral Apocalypse kind of, like, fills that niche for people because, like, the Neutral Apocalypse is their own faction that can communicate with each other and everything like that. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's basically all the questions I've got. Thank you so much for your time. I have to say, like, just personally, you've done an extremely good job with Town of Salem 2. You know, despite whatever negativity may be in the air to every now and then, Make no mistake, people are extremely happy that you guys did make this game and didn't just leave it at TOS 1 to just, like, die away. Thank you, I appreciate that. You know, it's nice to hear... I, I see people, like, in our Discord with, like, hundreds of hours played, and, uh, you know, it definitely feels good to see that, because um, as a developer, sometimes you can kind of get in the weeds with just, like, negative reviews and, and solving issues and bugs. And uh, sometimes you got to take a step back and remember that, you know, people do love the game and, and have fun playing it. And it's, you know, it feels good to see that. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Have a good one.